I mean, I feel like we, and I say this, and I say it's controversial, but um, I feel like we, as 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 black men, it's just individuals. I can't speak for Latin men or anything else. Um, and those Latin men who consider themselves black are welcome. But I feel like we are the scum of the earth. Like at this point, we have the attention of the youth of the world, and the best thing we can say to them is, fuck bitches, get money. And I don't, I'm not one of the rappers that separate myself from them. Like, all these dudes saying that type of shit are my brothers. We're all hip hop. It's not that's rap, this is hip hop, this is real rap, none of that shit. Like, we're all guilty. At some point, we gotta stop. You know what I mean? I think that. Um, the impact has been extremely negative. It started as something that could be positive. Like I said, we brought the world together, and now we're forgetting. We've liberated so many people in so many cultures. You know what I mean? Like people, like you were talking earlier, like Vietnam and around the world that are b-boy and breakdancing, feeling good about themselves. Poor people find a way to enjoy themselves and celebrate. And now we're, we've thrown a lot of bullshit on top of it. And it's our job to kind of take a step back. Like, to me, it's like me trying to make a marriage work with a black woman who we both grew up hearing bitches ain't shit. Like, she grew up dancing to Sugar Free and Dr. Dre just like I did. What does that do to us mentally when our favorite, like my parents' favorite song, they couldn't stay together, but it was Let's Stay Together, you know what I mean? So it's not the music, because the music was positive and the culture was negative. Now the music is negative, but I'm trying to live positive, but in the back of my mind, some part of me feels like I'm a sucker for trying to love one woman. Because that's all I've been told. But a lot of this music was made by people who have been married for years. A lot of these rappers talk about this pimp shit have been with the same girl since high school. So it's like, it's just we're so fucked up and trying to deal with it, you know? You know, I just feel like, all right, it's my job to kind of stop now and like try to be married and set a good example for the young people. Because I took Absol on tour and I talked. You know, I used to, you know, see a lot of young rappers coming up and like, I want to be a positive influence now. Like, this is where you grow up and be a man. You're young and I did all that shit. I'm not going to say don't do it. You know what I mean? My brother Chase Infinite is a manager for ASAP. You know what I mean? And like, he gives them knowledge, but you know, he's always telling me like, they said, nigga, what was you doing when you was 23? And you always go, ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, so I'm like, I'm just showing you how to grow up and hopefully you think I'm cool. Like, I make money, I'm respectable. Like, swag out your 30s. Like, at some point, it's chill. You know what I mean? You can't be 40 and doing You can, but what does that do for the culture? What does that do for your children? What does that do for everyone else? Like, at some point, I'm like, I have my fun. Fucked a lot of girls. Enough of see me online with porn stars. Like, I did it, bro. But at some point, we got to start being men and being like, all right, this is how you respect a woman. And, it, like, you know, when you're young, you're supposed to wild out, you know? But it's just, hip-hop has to grow up now. We gotta start, like, you know, pulling our pants up and blah, blah, blah. And I don't, you know, I tell my son all the time, but that's how I was when it's like, sag your pants, do whatever. I'm gonna tell you to pull them up so that when you get to the age, you will, you know? Yeah. I'm not gonna expect you to change right now. I'm, and I always tell him all the time, like, don't try to have one girlfriend. Like, you, this is it. But now it has to be. And there's always a lot of rappers that try to make grown music, but then they're still doing bullshit. They're not living it. So for me, it's like, we gotta start. Hip hop has a great has had a great impact and a mostly positive impact, but it's starting to lean towards. Like you got all this, you got all this attention, and we're the only music in the history of music that says the shit we said. Music has been around for millions of years or thousands of years. I don't know how accurate that is, but we're the first people in the past ten years, 20, 20 years ago, motherfucker, bitch, follow to use the music, use such a gift from God to say something so evil and demonic. Like, why? You know, but then when you get into the why, you have a good reason, because we were talking about post-traumatic stress. Everybody from the hood has post-traumatic stress. But we think it's normal. We just shake it off. But when you go a tour with Tech 9 and you go to middle America, that's a lot of reason why they love rap, because it's so crazy to them. Like, oh, shit. Y'all used to shoot each other? That's crazy. But it, it really is crazy. We don't take the time, like, yo, like, I had to take a couple years off the road and get I was having panic attacks, depression, you know, I'm an alcoholic, but I was just treating it with more alcohol and more women and more of this. But I had to like go to group therapy and like sit my ass down and a lot of people, we're taught in our in the hood, like you don't get psychiatric help. And then, I mean, for your company, probably, who's crazy? We are, but we need treatment. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't fault Ross for what he says 
or any rapper for what he says because he's damaged. You know what I mean? Like, just like I was damaged. Just because I got help and you didn't get the help. But no one gives, you know, my goddaughters, their, their dad was shot, killed. Like, took a week off, we buried them, and I'm taking them to school the next day. All right, your dad's not here, I'm gonna come pick y'all up every morning and take you to school. Three little girls. But no one at school stopped and said, yo, these kids need counseling. Then their uncle got shot. Like, it's like, yo, well, when do we stop and say, and then, and then their story's not unique. I'm not, like, I'm not more hood than anybody. And that's the whole thing, my first get into, oh, yeah, well, I know somebody shot three niggas. Well, all of this fucked up. That's not right, you know what I mean? Like, we need to start putting these programs in place to like, but the music's not helping. We're celebrating it, because that's what hip hop is. This is what you got, let's deal with it, let's dance, let's party, fuck it. Instead of like, you know what, let's party a little bit, but let's, because white people do that shit. They'll say, I talk that shit out to death. Mm -hmm. All right, Johnny, well, this is, you know, and we need to start doing that. Like, I need somebody to sit down with these kids, like, look, and talk to them. Like, that's, I, that's why I adopted a 15 year old. Because when you try to give me that bullshit, nah, dad, you don't understand this blood's a crime. I'm like, nigga, I'm from LA. Like, you, I'm saving you from the shit that I really had to go through. So stop. I take you to your psychology appointment every weekend. I put you in a private school, $1,400 a month. There's nothing you can say to me right now. And I'll tell them every morning I drive to school, like, if you blow this, bro, you just blow it. Because no one took me out of the shit and said, here, I took you out of that shit. I went to Alabama, I found you because I love you just as a human being and as a young black man. Like, this is the chance I'm giving you. And it's going to take more of that and less bottle popping and throwing money at 